Responsive design is one of the very important principles that we need to consider when we design a new product. We need to get sure that our design is looking good in different devices with the different size of the screens. In this video, we're gonna see how we can create and design a responsive layout and pages in the Figma in our prototype. My name is Kia and here is the Kimo. Welcome to another episode of the Kimo Lab. The main thing is that we are not sure that which kind of devices our end user are going to use in order to get access to our product. Nowadays, most of the users are using the mobile phone, uh, which has extremely small screen, or even some other wearable, uh, let's say, devices like the watches, smart watches, and uh, different, let's say, gadgets that has a smaller screens. In the other hand, there are different devices that has a extremely huge screens, like uh, the smart uh, TVs uh, or maybe some big monitors. That's why we need to get sure that our design is going to work for different devices with the different uh, size of the screens. In this video, we're gonna see how we can do the, uh, let's say, responsive design uh, in our prototype phase uh, before we go for the development. In the very first step, we're gonna see how we can uh, achieve this goal uh, in the Figma, and also what would be the other tools and the prototyping software that we can use in order to have a responsive design in the prototype. But before we go further in this process, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other video as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. There are two main principles that we need to consider when we want to design, a, let's say, responsive page and layout in the Figma. The first principle is that we need to get sure each individual component that we are going to use in our design has a responsive behavior. In order to create a responsive component, we need to get sure our elements inside the component would follow the size or the changes in the size of the parent element. To do so, we need to use the auto layout feature and apply it and the parent element, in this case, the frame. Then we need to define how would be the behavior of the child element, in this case, the text, when we resize the parent element. Here, as you can see, we set the width of the uh, text box to the fill, which means that the width of the text will follow the size of the parent element, in this case, the frame. With the elements, with the image, we need to get sure that when we resize the frame, that the image is inside it, the image will fill whole area. The thing is to get sure that we set the behavior of the image into the fill. As you can see, when we change the size of the frame of the image, the image will fill the whole area. And then we will follow the same logic. We, we apply the auto layout on the parent element, the frame, and then set the width of the image to the fill, which means it will follow the size of the parent element in the frame when we resize the uh, component. In result, when we resize the whole component, the image will follow the same logic. And the second principle is that we need to uh, design a different structure and layout and pages for different sizes of the frame and then use the plugins in order to define the breaking point for our, uh, let's say, main preview frame. Now we know how to create individual component with the responsiveness behavior. It's time to see how we can create responsive template and pages. One of the ways to use the breaking point plugin in the Figma. Using this plugin, we can define different sizes for the breaking point of our page and set different layouts and uh, frames that we define later to the specific size. In result, when we resize the whole page, we will see different layout and structure in the preview. This would be the result. A frame that when we resize it, after a specific breaking point, it will show us different frame and a different layout and a structure. This is exactly how we can have a responsive frame. Now it's time to see how we can use those principles uh, in the real project and how we can create, a, let's say, really simple uh, layout um, which, which, which has a responsive behavior. With all being said, it's time to see how we can use all this principle in practice. 
Here I'm trying to create a card with the headline, caption and paragraph text and maybe action bar uh, with some icons in it. All I'm doing is to follow the principle that I said before. I'm using the text tool and create some text. Then I set the styles in the way that I want. And then I'm bringing some icons and images in the card that I want to use. Now I'm adding a rectangle as a background of our card. Then I will set the position of our the elements, the text, the image inside it. This is going to be our parent element or parent frame. I'm using a splash plugin in order to add photos and images into my design and also the feather icons in order to add icons into my design. Now it's time to use the auto layout feature and apply it on our main, uh, let's say, parent uh, element, which is going to be the frame. The next step would be just adjusting the gap between the elements and also setting the width of the elements inside the parent element to the fill and their height to the hug the content. In this way, we will have a responsive behavior in every individual sub, uh, let's say, element inside our parent element. Here you can see that our card is working pretty well in the way that we expected. As we said before, now it's time to use some plugins in order to create responsive templates and pages. I'm creating three different main frames and also I add the card that we designed before into one of them. Then I'm trying to create the layout and the structure that I want to have in the same approach that we did before. Now we do the same thing again. We set the width of the, uh, each card to the fill and this way they will follow the changes of the parent element which is going to be the frame of our main page. I do the same thing for a different uh, frame and different size. I just use a different structure to get sure that our content would be readable and uh, understandable. Now our main pages are ready. We are using a responsive plugin in order to uh, define our breaking point for our page by just selecting the frames and clicking on this icon here. Now all we need to do is just creating a new frame and set it as a preview frame. This is how this plugin works and it's so easy to create a responsive uh, layout and pages. 
The second way is to use the another plugin, which the name is the breaking points. In order to use this plugin, you need to pay for it, but it has 15 days, uh, let's say free trial, that you can just use it in order to see if uh, you can use this kind of plugin in your project. It has a different, uh, let's say, user interface, but the logic is the same. Here you define a different breaking point and then set different frame to each of the uh, breaking points in order to say, okay, when the size of the preview frame was uh, one of this size above, uh, I want to see in a specific uh, uh, frame and the page that I set before. And in the result, as you can see, when we resize the preview frame, it will show us that it has a responsive behavior. And then I want to add this point that in the practice, when we want to design the prototype, uh, mostly we won't use such a feature uh, to bring the responsive behavior in our, let's say, prototype. Basically, we will design different, uh, uh, let's say, state for different size of the screen and a different frames, uh, and we will hand over it to the, uh, to the developers uh, in order to give them a better, uh, let's say, understanding of how would be the change of the a layout uh, based on the different size of the screen. So I would say these plugins are not going to be really useful in practice. What can be really helpful in a feature, and I would like to say it in the Figma, uh, is going to be a, a feature that can give this possibility to designer uh, to have this responsive behavior uh, in the final preview and when the user run the let's say prototype. We have this feature in some other prototyping tools like a Webflow and Framer. In both these tools, we can define a specific uh, breaking point for our website and also define a different layout for different sizes. But the good point is when we run the product or when we run the project, users can resize the uh, browser and at the same time, they, they can see and feel how the layout is changing based on uh, the, uh, the changes they are doing on the size of the browsers. And that's what exactly the designer needs. If you found this video interesting, please don't forget to like it, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.